pleasure. Now, it's an exciting day for China and the scientific community as a whole. Your general impressions as you saw that rocket blast off? Well, the launch uh, was, appears very successful. The uh, spacecraft has separated from the launch vehicle, and the solar panels have been deployed now. And uh, so everything is looking good at this point. Um, you know, they're getting ready. The next major phase of the mission will be the uh, cruise to the moon. And uh, at the landing site, um, in an area near Mons Rumker, uh, in the ocean of storms. The sun should be rising over the landing site this Friday. So uh, at this point, everything uh, seems to be okay. Right, and so is that the next stage then? We're actually waiting for Friday when it actually sort of lands on the moon. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen an exact landing time right now. At least I haven't. Um, but I know that it will not be landing before then. It, it, it rushed, and also, it takes about three days to get to the moon. Now, I, I'm not clear at this point if the spacecraft is going to be in a phasing orbit around the Earth and then fire its engines to uh, initiate the journey to the moon, or it's already on the cruise right now. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a, at earliest, it's a three-day trip to the moon at the quickest. And, uh, but if it's in this phasing orbit still around the Earth, it, it could be a couple more days beyond that. And then, um, as I mentioned, the sun will rise over the landing site uh, on Friday. So you don't want to land before then anyway, and uh, this is a, especially since this is a solar-powered vehicle, the lander. Um, but uh, then you have about two weeks because a lunar day is, you know, 14 Earth days. You have two weeks to do uh, your sampling and stowing the samples, and then lifting off from the moon. And uh, the plans, from what I have, uh, my understanding is that the samples should be back on Earth, Earth uh, probably around mid-December. So um, we still have several weeks in this mission to go. Uh, but it's off to a very good start right now. All right. Well, China has set quite ambitious goals for its space exploration program, James. It's already become the first nation to land on the far side of the moon and aims to have a permanent crewed space station by 2022. What's the motivation there? Well, I think uh, China, like a lot of nations around the world, realizes the importance of space. Um, the technology you get from exploring the moon or Mars or um, orbiting satellites, it affects our daily lives so much. And it's only becoming, as we go forward in time, it affects our lives more and more. It's embedded into our, our lives at this point. And, uh, you know, like the genie of space technology is out of the bottle. And it's not going away. It's, it, you know, it's actually proved our quality of life, um, medical breakthroughs. I could go on and on. But um, you see many nations... Uh, Wanting to, there's an urge to explore, which is, I think, built into our DNA as a species. But, um, you know, there are benefits that come back to the nations that take the risk and they reap the rewards, and that's the way it should be. And, you know, for the United States right now, our plans are hopefully we'll get astronauts back on the moon with the Artemis program by 2024, although, you know, there's some uncertainty in that right now in the last, uh, you know, most recent presidential election, what's going to happen. So, it's not for sure, but the moon is a uh, big stage, and a lot of nations are involved in that. China, obviously, the United States, the Europeans, and India. And, uh, you know, the last time attempts to land on the moon by Israel and India, they ended in failure. So, you know, landing on the moon is not a done deal. Uh, I will say that landing on the moon is a lot easier than landing on Mars, but uh, landing, as we have seen recently, landing on the moon is, is not a slam dunk. It's not a done deal. So, right. Um, Space travel is still risky. And James, you speak of the importance of space and sort of the Artemis program by the U.S., but the last human to visit the moon was back in 1972. Why has it been so long? And why sort of now the renewed lunar interest by all these different countries? Well, you're exactly right. It was December 1972, with the Apollo 17 mission, the last time uh, astronauts visited the moon. And it's, it's you know, approaching you know, half a century mark since the, the last Apollo mission. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for it. I, I think with the Apollo program, it was part of the uh, part of an aspect of the Cold War raising the Soviet Union um, to the moon. And, you know, I think look, when historians look back, even as we go progress down time, they're going to think that they're going to see that was a very unusual thing that we developed this capability and the infrastructure to do this. And then basically we threw it away. And uh, I think that was the true waste of, of money people always talk about. We developed this capability. And then we just let it go. And we're trying to redevelop it now with Artemis program. Um, the, the interest in the moon, the moon is very, the moon is a 
convenient stepping stone to the stars. It's only, like I said, a three-day journey away. And, um, you know, it, it's a neat little way if you know, think about things. The space station orbits the Earth about 240 miles above the surface. Well, the moon is about 1,000 times further away than that. And then Mars is 1,000 times further away than the moon. So you can see it's a nice progression there. Uh, the moon is very close, and if things go wrong in terms of uh, sending people there, uh, they can get back relatively quickly compared to going to Mars. But the moon, in terms of science, there's a lot to learn about the moon. The moon of Apollo is not the moon of today. We've made a lot of discoveries in those intervening decades. The moon is a very exciting place. There's a lot of big questions. Um, you know, the Apollo astronauts, we only landed in six places on the moon. The moon is the size of the continent of Africa. So I, I don't think you could figure out the continent of Africa by only visiting six locations. Mm. Um, there are resources on the moon. Uh, I think the most important is the water ice and the polar areas, the permanently shut up craters. Um, and if you're talking about Mars, I think we need to use Mars, excuse me, use the moon as a test bed or a proving ground of technologies, tools, and techniques that we'll use when we eventually send astronauts to Mars. So, so there's a lot of reasons for the moon. Um, you know, the resources, I, I think, for in terms of sending astronauts, is very close compared to Mars. Um, and it's also this innate urge we have as human beings to explore, to discover. It, it, to me, uh, that is built into our DNA. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't, you know, shut it off. It's, if you look at our species, you know, we started in Africa, and we spread out across the whole globe, and now we're reaching out into space, and that's the natural progress of things. And I think that, uh, as I said earlier, the nations that take the risk and are, that will reap the rewards, and it's been that way throughout history. And, uh, um, you know, if a nation decides to turn its back and think this is an important thing to do, well, so be it. But I can guarantee you other nations will still continue to push forward. So, um, right. you know, I, I just think 